I don't want to interfere with Jamie right now. She's having some alone time, I think, with her. Guys, we're uh, having a tough time. We are f afraid that Dixie, Jamie's horse, may have come to the end of her road. She's lying there in the dirt, and uh, we've done all that we can do. We've exhausted all of our resources as far as the people and the know. We've spoken to just a number of vets. We've um, talked to our farriers. We've I've FaceTimed with Rick, our friend Rick, things like a horse. And I think that pretty much we've all come to the, the conclusion that this is just the end for her. She's lived a very long and good life. She's 26 years old. She's a uh, survivor from Hurricane Harvey flooding. You know, Dixie was the only horse out of nine who survived the flood. Aunt Joy and Uncle Raleigh lost all their other babies, but somehow she pulled through. I don't want to get too close. I don't want to. I'm trying to give Jamie her time. Jamie's sitting here. You can see um, Beverly's right there beside her. Dixie's laid all the way down. She's just not feeling good. She hasn't been herself for a couple of days. We talked to Rick. And he said, you need to try to get her up and try to get her loaded. And we can't load her, y'all. She won't move. What's wrong with her? It goes everything from what we think is laminitis to we know for sure there's some thrush. We think she has something going on with her gut. I forgot what they call it. Guys, I'm not a horse person, you know that. But um, colic, I think they said colic. She's colicky. And not to mention that she has an infection, we think, in one of her teeth. You already know that we've had a lot of dental work done on her. She's had a lot of teeth pulled, poor baby, so old. And um, I think that all of these things combined have just taken a toll on her. She's been thrush, thrashing around in the ground there. Kitty, which we know that's like a, a sign of the colic, it's just how she's been thrashing around in the ground, up and down. We have given her everything that we have um, like I said, I don't know all the names of everything. My gosh, we've just done so much. I don't want to interfere with Jamie right now. She's having some alone time, I think, with her. <laughs> now Beverly's going to get up. Beverly... Is laying right there with her. Instead of saying a whole lot about what I things I don't know, let me tell you what I do know. 
that these two over here, Beverly and Dixie, have been the best of friends. When Jamie made the decision to bring them both here to Longhorn Lusters, that was the smartest thing she could have done for both of them. Back at I'm a Survivor, they both struggled. And, um, you know, Dixie being a mayor, very quiet and reserved, a little bit introverted maybe. And then of course our two geldings, Buc Bucky's and Voodoo, just always trying to be mean to her and run her around. Jamie knew that she was not in the best situations over there. And then um, we always knew that Beverly and her had some kind of a close connection. And so bringing them both over here, I remember it was it was tough. It was tough trying to convince you guys at first how this is gonna be the best move for them. But I think that you all saw them thrive. Just, you saw the both, you know, they both, they did, they thrived here. They survived through just a horrendous drought. And um, you remember Beverly had gotten herself injured by getting pushed back on top of a, a T post, went up to the back of her leg. And Dixie was right there with her all through all of her healing and through all of the process of that kitty. <laughs> this kitty cat wants some attention. <sighs> but I'll tell you what, they've run these hills and they've played in this pond and they've explored every inch of this 10 acres and I think their favorite thing was hanging out with Miss Pat. Miss Pat comes up on her golf court, cart and these two can't wait to get over there. Miss Pat always has some kind of special treat for them. You getting more water? Yeah. So we've been taking water back and forth to her. And she hasn't moved out of this spot in a couple of days. She gets up, stands around, lays down, rolls around. Which I think, and like I say, I don't know. You cannot take a thing of what I'm saying and go anywhere with it because I don't know what I'm saying. But I think that that might be some of the colic. But then she can't hardly walk because her feet hurt from the laminitis, the thrush. We've been picking hooves and putting all kinds of things. I don't know. I feel bad for Jamie. She has a, a closer attachment to Dixie than what I do. I like Dixie. I love Dixie. I, but everyone knows that your animal picks you more than you picking an, an animal. And, um, Dixie picked Jamie, which was beautiful because my Uncle Raleigh, long before he got sick, he wanted Jamie to have Dixie. He, he knew. Dixie, Uncle Raleigh's last surviving horse. And Uncle Raleigh knew that Jamie had something special with Dixie. They had a neat connection. And he wanted Jamie to have her. And they've been bonded ever since. You see Tina over here in the distance coming up. I'm going to see if Jamie will talk to us now. 
tell us what's going on. Can I come up? Yeah. All right. I was trying to be respectful. I hate for Jamie to be alone, but can I have a make a video? Yeah. I'm not gonna look, look at your face. I promise. No, she looks tired. She, she got up. What's this one over here doing? I don't know. It's, so what's funny is she wasn't getting all the attention that she wanted. I, I knew that today. You think she's pouting? But all of a sudden I'm like, wait, does, did she convince herself that she's sick too? <laughs> no, they don't do that. She's just being hard-headed. Is baby, she? I think that it's just late. And they're just all tired. Um, what can you say about Dixie that you know, or just what you what are you thinking compared to? Can, I mean, with everyone you've spoken to, watch your step there, babe. So we know that she's got a little bit of a laminitis flare up. Right? So a laminitis flare up. Which causes them to stand still. Doesn't it's not the normal activity. Yeah. Not the normal blood flow. And then what happens is she doesn't drink enough water, and her digestion slows down. Okay. So that, in combination with eating all the lovely ryegrass that we planted, like it's going out of style and never coming back, has probably given her colic which is a stomach ache in horses that can be can be fatal. It can cause blockage, it can cause a torsion, which is a twist of her intestines basically that uh, that can burst and and become fatal. So add that with some maybes of maybe tooth pain. Yeah. We don't know if that's really she's had teeth problems in the past. Yeah, I said that in the video, and the way she's doing with her mouth could be more of that. Or it could be anxiety because she feels bad. So that's also a sign of anxiety. So there's like treatments, but the, the biggest treatment is really rest, fluids. So just real Amen. fast, let's just uh, address all the folks are going to say, how come she's not in the back of your trailer at a vet's office? She can't ride in a trailer right now. Guys, that would be just the most inhumane thing ever First to off, put her she move. She to, not move. we would have to drag her, whip her, beat her into no, a back of a trailer. I would never. I know, baby. I know. We're not going to do that, my friends. It's one thing if you pick up your cat, pick up your dog, put them into a crate, but when you have a large animal. Number two, the closest vet that's open is three hours away. Yeah. And then. So it's not a 10 minute ride to the vet's yeah, office. Yeah. Guys, and we, you know, we're here in the country. So we do have a vet that comes to us. But that's, they, they, they do that on Wednesdays. No. And they we, don't. We may be able to get them out here on Monday. But that's still. Yeah, that's. Not today. <laughs> not now. And so, you know, you try to. Do the they best have you can. Given me the advice that we've got, you know, yeah, I talked about that. We've exhausted all of our online and personal connections resources, and we've done, and pretty much everyone's saying the exact same thing. Talk about how the age plays into it, babe. That's a huge part. I mean, Dixie's twenty six. Yeah. And um, what's that in? You add in what happens in older age where everything slows down, literally everything, and your healing takes so much longer and so so much more effort. And yeah. um, Dixie, trust me, I know how you feel as far as that goes. I'm a... You add in some arthritis and just overall, like, healing and getting better from a simple cold takes longer. Beverly, are you that tired? Beverly just wants to be brushed. Beverly's been up in my business like crazy. Yep. 
I think it's beautiful the way the other animals are respecting her space. And I, normally the ostriches sleep right here. And tonight they've gone off out in the distance. Normally Tex and his family are right here. This is their spot over here behind me in the hay. And even they've gone over there. And we haven't had to shoo anybody away or run them off. They've just on their own just are being respectful of the fact that she's not feeling well. She's been kind of, well, they, they can tell y'all, they can just tell. And I think that they're just giving her space. Can I love you, baby? You good girl. Is your tummy hurt too? Huh? Do tummy too? Oh, does it hurt? Okay, Bev. <laughs>